G'day guys, how you doing? It's the Kiwi here, back with another video. Um, and in this video we're going to be talking about some subject matter that I feel that nobody is really talking about. And the reason why I say that is I've been watching a couple of videos um, over the last couple of weeks from certain uh, YouTube content producers and on this, this subject of all this tracer facial recognition stuff, everything like that. And they're not telling you the truth. One of them happens to be Russell Brand. And I hate to say this, Russell, not that you'll watch this video, but the reality of the situation is you're not being, either you're not finding this information, or if you are finding this information, you're not telling people about it. Because what's going on is so far above and beyond just facial recognition technology, it is mind-blowing. You see, Russell's been doing some videos about facial recognition technology and tracer stuff and everything like that in Australia. And the reality of the situation is this is already happening in New Zealand. Now, if you go to the description section below, there is a link. If you click on that link, you'll see where the link is from. When you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a PDF. Click on that PDF. What you're going to see is a full report from that or global organization in regards to reimagining <laughs> regulation in the age of artificial intelligence. And you will see exactly which country is going to be the first full artificial intelligence ran country on the planet. And that country is New Zealand. New Zealand has signed up yet again to be the guinea pig for modern technology. You see, New Zealand's been the guinea pig for all sorts of social, political, and technological experiments for most probably a hundred years. How do I know that? Well, my uncle, a gentleman by the name of Trevor Bryant, used to be the commissioner of Crown Lands for the South Island of New Zealand during the 1980s. Said uncle was also personal friends with the then Prime Minister, David Lange. During the 80s, my father and my uncle used to get into these bang-up arguments about the One World Government and the One World Cashless Society and how New Zealand was going to be the first cashless society or be utilized as the experiment for the first cashless society on the face of the earth. I was literally talking to that uncle Christmas time of 2019 in Blenheim, New Zealand. And in discussing this stuff with him, he goes, we're just about there, Lawrence. We're just about there. Yeah, really pretty amazing. So it makes one wonder if everything that's been happening for the last two years or so hasn't been planned in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, it has been, 100%. That's all there is to it. Because when you open that link and then open the PDF, scroll down to page 5, the bottom of page 5, and you'll see Project Timeline. Now, see, in New Zealand, I was in New Zealand living down there, and what I experienced after the first lockdown, the first thing that they started to get you to do was download a tracer app for these things, these little magic black boxes that we carry with us everywhere these days. And people were downloading this tracer app like nothing else on earth. Now, I know for a fact through different associations, and they can track you anywhere. You don't need a tracer app on your phone. But the reality was, was the Tracer app was the first step in this digital passport that they're rolling out in New Zealand now. And that digital passport is called the traffic light system. And just to give you an idea of how draconian the traffic light system is in New Zealand, you literally, if you don't have your two jabs, you don't get a green light. If you've got two jabs, you get a green light. That green light allows you to move anywhere and everywhere that you can in New Zealand. Use public transport, fly, go to any shop you want to, do whatever you want. So long as you got your two jabs, it'll go on your digital passport or your D 
digital vaccine card and then it will be associated to your Tracer app on your phone. So the next part is, well, what happens if you've only got one jab? Well, then you get a yellow light or an orange light where you can only go so to so many places. You can only go, you know, to certain events. You can only do, you know, you need to, you need to mask up and you need to social distance and you only need to go to the necessary areas that you need to go to. Well, what happens if you have no jabs at all? Well, guess what? you get a red light and that means you can't go anywhere you can't do anything seriously you can't travel you can't use public transport you can't fly you can't do anything well how do they know that tracer app I couldn't get over it. it blew me away watching how many people were just so willingly just willingly downloading that Tracer app. And I spoke to people that I work with, etc., and they're just like, oh, it's no big deal, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm not. I've traveled Russia, the Ukraine, studied the communist takeover of Russia. The reality of the situation is this has had nothing to do with what they've been telling you that has been going on over the last week. Right here on the project timeline, scoping, okay? Build core project community of key stakeholders and identify primary issues and knowledge base. December of 2019. September to December of 2019. Okay. January to June 2020. Work with the project community to frame the conversation of AI regulation. Identify focus areas, draft governance framework, select pilot projects, etc. Select pilot projects. January to June 2020. Now you have to understand that the New Zealand government and key players have been working with Silicon Valley in California, San Francisco. You'll see it in this report. The select pilot project was the Tracer app. That was the first major project to actually get this Tracer app up and running in New Zealand. Because the New Zealand police have already got a thorough facial recognition technology system going on right now. And just an FYI, facial recognition technology is old news. It's been around forever. I know that. I've had to have my own personal background checks done for some serious US government organizations. Friends who work for these serious government organizations, if they have civilian friends, have to have their civilian friends' backgrounds checked. If I was on any digital system, like any digital storage system, through facial recognition technology, they were able to pin me down anywhere and everywhere around the world like that. And that was back in 2010. Now think about why have you been having to wear masks for the last couple of years? And not only why have you been having to wear masks, but why has there been a huge lockdown of society? It's all to do with training AI for retinal recognition. All this other stuff that everybody has been talking to you about is out the window. It's old school. It's old news. The retinal recognition technology stuff is where it is going and beyond that. So the reality of the situation is down in New Zealand now, they are heading towards basically, a lot of people think, I might be overreacting when I say this. However, I've I've been through ex-communist countries. Like in Russia and like in the USSR, you had to have a what they called an internal passport. And that passport was something that you had to have with you everywhere. It allowed you to travel between the different Soviet states and everything like that. They had a similar thing in China. It so when you got stopped, you were able to produce this internal passport. Well, that 
really has, you know, the digital passport is pretty much the same thing. Because what they're going to do now is with these, they've, you've given, via the trace wrap in New Zealand, you've given full authority to the government to be able to trace you anywhere and everywhere. Now, New Zealand's a small country. Why do you need to trace people that tra Oh, yeah, we need to trace people globally. But you see, here's the thing. In the United States, this is the beautiful thing about the United States, is stuff like that is unconstitutional. This country will go to war before they will allow that sort of stuff to roll out. So it's also no accident now that there's some other you know, variant of a certain virus that's showing up in this country now. They're going to keep on pushing this stuff like nothing else on earth. Now the next thing is July to December of 2020. Well, the reality of the situation is they rolled out the Tracer app. They've been testing the Tracer app. Um, they've been, here's the amazing thing in that, this one. Capture lessons and share findings. So let's say you got this Tracer app and you're seeing how it's all playing out because these individuals can get everything real time and see how it implements into society. How well is it working? Is it, is it doing its job? So let's say for argument's sake, you ended up getting sick with a certain virus. You go to the hospital, you test positive. Okay, they ask you, do you have your Tracer app on your phone? Well, yes, ma'am, I do. I do have my Tracer app on my phone. Okay, the police and the necessary security services get involved, and next thing you know, they know exactly where you've been. And not only exactly where you've been, whose other phones you've been walking past other individuals that you've been by. See, what they're telling you in New Zealand is that you, you know, they will go into their system and tell you, okay, oh, these, here's these other people that were at, you know, New World Supermarket at this specific time. No, with the Tracer app, these sons of bitches talk to each other. So they know exactly who you've been by. Then, not only do they know exactly who you've been by, they know exactly where you've been, whose homes you've been at. Even Because homes don't have tracer apps, right? You, or the, the QR codes that you scan at people's homes. So they need these things with the tracer app to be able to talk to each other. And that's what they've been discovering in New Zealand. But they haven't told you yet in any way, shape or form. Which is really amazing because in this report, they're talking about transparency and how to be honest and open with the public in regards to being able to roll out this technology. Well, where's the transparency? Have you heard anything about what I've been telling you? No. Has the New Zealand government been transparent and telling you everything? You only have to go to the top, to, uh, the top of page seven. New Zealand Workshop, Global Workshop in San Francisco. New Zealand Workshop, October 2019. Global Workshop, San Francisco, 2020. The dates in this report are mind-blowing how they correlate with everything. But there's this huge key takeaways with the New Zealand um, transparency deal. You know, use. Use a people-centered design, okay? So what they're utilizing is like, okay, we've got to use a specific group of people to help roll this stuff out. In New Zealand, it's the Māori people, the indigenous people, which is just unfrickin' real. You know, ensure human rights underpins the work. What sort of human rights have you got in New Zealand right now? You've got none because they've kept you in the emergency protocol stuff for so long the New Zealand government has been taken to court so many times over the past year in regards to this stuff, and every case is being kicked out. There is no human rights in any way, shape, or form. Jacinda Ardern has even said, you either get two jabs or you're out. There's no nothing. There's nothing to do with human rights in any way, shape, or form. What they've been rolling out in New Zealand is pure draconian dictatorship 
And to finish this off, I want people to know that if you go to the World Economic Forum's website and type in young global leaders, okay, or just type in young global leaders into Google, and then go to the alumni of the young global leaders. At the top of the list for the young global leaders alumni for the World Economic Forum is Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda Ardern is not working for New Zealanders in regards to the rolling out of this AI technology and Klaus Schwab's fourth industrial revolution. She works for the World Economic Forum, pure, plain and simple. So if any of you know any New Zealanders, please, 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 please share this video with them. Because right now in New Zealand, the government is taking over everything. They're taking over water rights. They're taking over farmers' land and property. They're forcing people to actually have to have these jabs. Because if you don't have these jabs, you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. And it has nothing, absolutely, let me repeat this again, it has nothing to do with a certain virus. It has everything to do with the rolling out and implementation of artificial intelligence throughout the entirety of New Zealand. And trust me when I tell you this, September, October, November next year, the US economy is going to crash. That will destroy New Zealand's economy. They are working diligently at making New Zealand the first full cashless society. You won't be able to do anything in New Zealand without artificial intelligence knowing exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it, where you're doing it, and why you're doing it. And if you get pulled over without your digital passport, I will guarantee you, you will get fined, if not arrested, just like they used to do in Soviet Russia if you didn't have your papers. You were arrested and taken away. And oh, just so you know, right now in New Zealand there are multiple people, dozens of people in jail for just breaking certain virus protocols during a lockdown. New Zealand, as I said, it's what's happening down there is not good. So there's the video. Share it. Please share it.